This video will illustrate starting up a Petrel new project and then loading the Teapot Dome 3D Seismic data set into Petrel. The first thing we need to do is go to the Project menu and Project Settings. We're going to use this to put the coordinates of the map projection for the Teapot Dome area into this data set. We will do that by going to this Coordinates and Units window, if it's not the first one that comes up as it did for mine. We're going to go to Select to select a map projection. In our case, we're going to be looking for the map projection with a datum of NAD 27, and it is going to be the Wyoming State Plain uh, East Central uh, map projection that we're going to be looking for for this area. So I'm going to fill in some of those words to help, it, help us find uh, the, uh, the, the projection that we're looking for. So we're going to put in NAD27, we're going to put a space in, and we're going to find uh, Wyoming in a space. And we're going to put East Central. And that probably will be enough to narrow down the number of projections to just the six or eight that are here. I'm going to open this, drag this window a little bit so that I can see the full name of these particular choices. And we're going to notice I see one here, NAD 27, Wyoming State Plains, East Central Zone in U.S. feet. There are several others here we could click, but this one will work. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to say OK. It's going to give me a warning that I'm changing the coordinate system. In this case, I, I want to make this change. It's on purpose. So I'm going to say OK. The other thing I'm going to change is the unit system, which for most drilling in the United States will be uh, not metric units, but rather in this case field UTM. You'll notice that all of the features down here are either in milliseconds or feet or feet per seconds, so feet, feet per second. So this is the, the set of uh, coordinates that we'll be using. I'm going to say OK to set this for my project so that the project will assume data coming in come in in that format. Now we're going to have to populate the input pane. So we're going to go up to Insert, and we're going to go down to New Seismic Main Folder. This is going to contain all of our interpretations. It can contain many surveys, many seismic uh, data sets that we might want to add for this area. So I'm going to click that. I get just the name seismic, which is all right for the moment. Now I'm going to use the right button to click and add a folder that will allow us to insert a specific seismic survey. In this case, our 3D data set would be an example of this. So I'm going to click that make this window a little bit wider so we could see all of it. So that I have survey here. I'm going to open that with the right mouse button. I'm going to see the item called import on selection. This is a way to import data of the particular type that I've clicked on. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to navigate to the 3D teapot dome data set. I'm going to first go up a little bit here. And this was the, this plus something I added here was part of what was on your, uh, the disk that I've given you or that was available on the uh, P drive. Uh, so what you want to do is find the teapot folder, double click on that. 3D is for the 3D data from Teapot Dome that you'll be using, double click on that. And then the SegWi file will be loading as FILT underscore MIG. This comes from the processor. It probably refers to a filtered migrated version of the 3D data. So I'm going to select that. I'm also going to notice down here that I have the files of a particular type. There's a list here that you can press the right left mouse button and get many choices of different formats in which seismic data could be, inter could be brought in to the project. In our case, we're coming in with SegWi seismic data, so you want to make sure that's selected here. Now I've selected the name, and I'm going to open the file. And it has now looked at the file. 
I'm going to give it a name that's more meaningful to me, which is Teapot Dome 3D. And that just uh, just works better for me. All of the rest of these options are basically correct. You'll notice that this is the map projection in which the SegY data were recorded and which matches now what our project is. So that should be should all work very well. So I'm going to click OK down at the bottom. It now very quickly loaded the data set. And you'll note it's added a series of lines here. One, Teapot Dome 3D. That's what I just changed, and that relates to this particular seismic survey that we'll work with. It also shows an inline number and a cross-line number. And these can be displayed uh, very nicely in, in the display. However, in order to speed things up, a general thing that I do, and I think many or many uh, patrol users do, is we're going to make this data set a little more compact so that the system can work with it and display things more quickly. Uh, Patrell refers to that as realizing the data set. It will change the data set from 32-bit uh, numbers to 8-bit numbers, which just makes it much more compact and easier to work with. So I'm going to hit the right button when I point at Teapot Dome, and I'm going to get a list of choices. And one of them is this funny word, Realize. So I'm going to click that, and it's going to give me a display that will allow me to do this process of realizing the data. Now one can do, can fiddle with a lot of things in terms of these parameters, but in this case, we are just going to click the button Realize. And we will notice that now we have another set. This is Teapot Dome 3D Realized, number one. And it also has inline, crossline, it, but it also has time slices in it that are already in a format that they can be easily handled by the computer. So I'm going to come down and simply press OK. And at this point, I will just close up. It won't, this, this version of the data will, won't go away, but I'm going to uh, just close it by hitting the, uh, the minus sign there. And this is the one that I'm going to be using for display. Now, in order to display this at the first go, so at this point, this actually is now loaded in. We could save this project, and you'd have a good starting point. I'm just going to check and make sure that this has worked well. I'm going to go to the Window menu, pull it down. I'm going to get a 3D window that I can display. It should come up over here. And I'm going to get rid of this Task Manager just to make a little more screen space. And now I can come in here and I can check all three of these if I choose. And what we're going to see right now is the time slice that's shown there. It's not a very good choice of a time slice. But then I can use this hand cursor to actually rotate this, turn it around. And we can see that I do have, uh, I do have these. We can turn off the inline. So we know that the inline is this section. It runs sort of side to side on the survey. The cross section is the line that runs sort of along the distance, the length of the survey. And Z is the time slice. So we will be able to manipulate those and do all sorts of things. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and save this project. I'm going to do that by going up to File, pulling down Save Project As. And I'm then going to have a ch an opportunity to navigate to a place where I want to put where I want to put my projects. And uh, so I'm going to go up to the computer. I'm going to go to this is my this is my portable disk, like the one that you've received, underneath, and then here at any point I want, perhaps under this or perhaps in a drive uh, folder of my own choosing. I'm going to open that. Here's my Teapot DSS folder. These are our teapot, various teapot patrol projects. And I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to call it uh, the tutorial load project. And it will add all the subscripts that are needed. I'm going to say save. And it should do a fairly quick job of saving the data set. And now I will be able to open that later. Remember that when, and I can close this window now if I choose, and the data set has been saved. Uh, be careful when you are taking the 
the portable uh, disk drive out, that you always eject it properly uh, so that we don't corrupt corrupt uh, anything in the data. The patrol data is kind of flaky. If you if you get in and, and in any way mess with the data that's that's in it, um, it can it can lose track of things. So I'm always very uh, very ready to make extra copies of the project so that I have ways to get back to data. Anyway, this uh, completes the uh, description of how to load, create a new data set or new project and to load data for the teapot. All of the other projects we will do will work in the same way. You'll be able to load the data relatively quickly and easily. Thank you.